Hello and welcome back to the channel Science Match and Engineering. Today we are going to discuss the APSC Education 2021 Mechanical Engineering Paper Part 2. So let's get started. Now we have already discussed the question number 25, so we will start from question number 26. Backyard headstock of a lathe is used for A. Giving heavier depth of cut and feed B. Giving low depth of cut and feed at high speed C. Increasing spindle speed during finished turning or D. Reversing the feed to return to starting point in thread cutting So you can stop and think of the answer So the answer is Backyard headstock of a lathe is used for giving heavier depth of cut and feed. So it is uh, MC, it is option A. Now backyard headstock of a lathe allows the chuck to rotate slowly with greatly increased turning power. Okay. And thus is used for giving heavier depth of cut and feed. In case uh, you want to know more about it, so here I am giving the source. So we'll go to the next question. The function of feed rod in a lathe is to a provide feed to cutting tool, b increase or decrease spindle speed, c provide motion to the carriage, or d engage lead screw during the thread cutting. So you can wait, you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is. The function of a feed rod in a lathe is to provide motion to the carriage. This you can find in your basic box of technology books. So I am giving here the source. So we will go to the next question. Slotting machines are used for cutting internal gear teeth in A. Job production B. Mass production C. Batch production or D none of the above so you can pause and think of the answer the answer is slotting machines are used for cutting internal gear teeth in batch production okay so to know more you can follow the manufacturing process to book so we'll go to the next question orthogonal cutting denotes a Cutting tool is perpendicular to job. B. Chips flow perpendicular to cutting edge. C. Cutting edge angle of tool is 90 degree. Or D. Cutting edge angle of tool is 0 degree. So you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is B. Orthogonal cutting denotes chip flowing perpendicular to cutting edge. Now, in many books, this is not mentioned explicitly, so we can follow the source, okay, for this. So, we will go to the next question. Back rack of turning tool is measured on its A. Machine transverse plane B. Machine longitudinal plane C. Orthogonal plane or D. Reference plane so you can pause and think of the answer the answer is back rack of turning tool is measured on its tra machine transverse plane so we will go to the next question cobalt is added to high speed steel cutting tool to a increase its hot hardness b increase its wear resistance c Lower the critical range temperature or D increase its toughness. Okay, so you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is cobalt is used to increase the hot hardness. Okay, now in high speed steel, chromium, which is about 4%, is used to obtain good hardening action. Vanadium again uh, from 2 to 4 percent is used to increase its resistance against abrasion while cobalt 5 to 12 percent is used to increase its hot hardness. So the answer is cobalt. So if you want to know more you can go to the source. So we will go to the next question. 
in DCSP arc welding, a electrode is heated much faster than work material, b work material is heated much faster than electrode, c both electrode and work material are heated evenly or d none of the above. So, you can pause and think of the answer. So, the answer is in DCSP arc welding work material is heated much faster than electrode. Now, what is DCSP? DCSP means direct current straight polarity. Okay. And here about two third of the heat is produced on the workpiece and one third at the electrode end. So, the work material is heated much faster than the electrode. So, you can check the source if you want to know more. So, we will go to the next question. Oxyacetylene flame cutting can be effectively used to cut a high alloy chrome nickel steel, b low alloy steels carbon up to 0.7 percent, c aluminium or d non ferrous alloys. So, you can pause and think of the answer. So, the answer is Oxyacetylene flame cutting can be used effectively to cut low alloy steels carbon up to 0.7 percent. Now, here you see carbon has a strong affinity for iron and steel at elevated temperatures at that, that is around 760 to 870 degree centigrade. So, at high temperature oxygen forms iron oxide which is rust with iron which has a low melting temperature and at high temperatures it melts out and the metal is cut okay so we'll go to the next question while calculating solidification of casting cover runoff's rule is coverinoff's rule is valid for a all casting materials b long freezing range alloys and pure metals c medium freezing range alloys and pure metals or d short freezing range alloys and pure metals so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is that while calculating solidification of casting coverinoff's rule is valid for short freezing range alloys and pure metals and coverinoff's rule states that the solidification time is directly proportional to the square of the ratio of volume to surface area. Now, <coughs> if the freezing range is short, then the metal will, the cast will solidify and so it will have uniform solidification. But if it, it is medium range, freezing range or long freezing range, then what happens is that uh, the um, casting may freeze at, at the, uh, means out in outside may freeze then interior some portions may freeze so what will happen is that there will be shrinkage defects okay so this rule will not be valid there so in case you want to check you can check the source okay so we'll, we'll go to the next question in sand casting the defect misrun does not occur due to a inadequate metal supply b high mold or melt temperature, C, low mold or melt temperature, or D, improperly designed case. Now, we can pause and think of the answer. So, the answer is, in metal casting, the defect misrun does not occur due to high mold or melting temperature. So, misrun occurs if we have very low pouring temperature, if there is lack of fluidity of the metal or the dates are too small or there are too many restrictions in the gating system. But if our melt temperature is high, so as the, uh, as the metal moves uh, which is because of high mole temperature, so the misrun does not occur at high melting, high mole temperature. Okay. So, we will go to the next question. In method study, a rectangle symbolizes A. Operation, B. Delay, C. Storage, or D. Inspection. 
So you can pause and think of the answer. The answer is in method study, a rectangle symbolizes inspection. So while drawing the chart, if it has a rectangle, it symbolizes then it has an inspection operation. Okay. So we will go to the next question. Which of the following charts used in method study gives the bird's eye view of the whole process by recording only the major activities and inspections involved in the process? A. Operation process chart B. Flow process chart C. Two-handed process chart or D. Multiple activity chart Now you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is operation process chart or outline process chart gives the bird eye view of the whole process by recording only the major activities and inspections involved in the process. So the answer is A. So we will go to the next question. CMOS chart is used in A. Time study B. Method study C. Micro motion study or D none of the above. Now we can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is CMOS chart is used in micro motion study. It is an extremely detailed left hand right hand operation chart. Besides hand movement of other limbs may also be recorded here. So the very Micro motion of the uh, operators are recorded here. So it is this CMOS chart. Okay. So we'll go to the next question. At break even point, sales revenue equals to A. Fixed cost B. Variable cost C. Total cost D. Inventory cost. So you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is at break even point sales revenue is equal to total cost. So basically with break even point we try to understand how many units we need to sell or how many months it will take to recover our to get break even with our total cost and so that after that we can start making profit. So we will go to the next question. Which of the following is not a correct method of lowering break even point? A. Reducing fixed cost. B. Reducing variable cost per unit. C. Increasing sales revenue per unit. Or D. Increasing production. So you can pause and think of the answer. So the answer is. That break even point, what is the equation? Break even point, the equation is that fixed cost divided by 1 minus variable cost per unit divided by selling price of per unit. So, what we can see is that if we lower the fixed cost, then our break even point will reduce. If we <coughs> lower the variable cost, then again our Our break even point will uh, decrease. If we increase the selling price of each product, then also, then also our break even point will decrease. But if we increase production, it has no effect because break even point will basically give us how many units of the, uh, of the uh, material we need to sell. To get break even. So even if we increase production, it will increase the profit, but it has no effect on the break even point. Okay, so with production, increase of production, it that is not a, a factor of determining the break even point. Okay. So in case you have any more doubt, you can follow the source. So we'll go to the next question. Which one of the following is not an assumption in break-even analysis? A. 
quantity discounts are not available b inventory holding cost uh, gets influenced by quantity no other factor will see no other factor influence the cost except the quantity or d there is a linear relationship between sales volume and cost so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is inventory holding cost gets influenced by quantity is not an assumption in break even analysis as in break even analysis we determine the total quantity of goods to be sold to reach the break even point and it does not evaluate the inventory requirement of the raw materials or finished goods of the or the inventory method that is being incorporated okay so we'll go to the next question in surface texture assessment a roughness is secondary texture and waviness is primary texture b smoothness is secondary texture and roughness is primary texture c flatness is primary texture and roughness is secondary texture or d roughness is primary texture and waviness is secondary texture so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is in surface texture assessment, roughness is primary texture and waviness is secondary texture. So, answer is D. Okay. So, you can follow the source and, and if you have any more doubt, you can clear it out. So, we will go to the next question. Gantt chart is a principal tool for A. Loading B. Scheduling C. Both A and B or D none of the above so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is gantt chart is a principal tool for both loading and scheduling okay so if you have any more doubt you can follow the source okay so we'll go to the next question the activity during duration in part network analysis is assumed to belong to a beta distribution b normal distribution c erlang distribution or d exponential distribution so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is the activity duration in part network analysis is assumed to belong to beta distribution okay so you can check it for the source so we'll go to the next question in the solution of a linear programming problem there are 10 variables and 6 equality constraints now the number of basic solutions possible is a 8008 b 10 c 6 or d 210 so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is D 210. So here n is 10 and m equal to 6. And from the equation, the basic now feasible solutions possible here is given as is equal to n factorial divided by m factorial into n minus m factorial which is equal to 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial into 4 factorial so which is equal to 210 okay so in case you have any more doubt you can check the source so we'll go to the next question a thermodynamic system working on Carnot cycle operates between 305 Kelvin and 260 Kelvin its COP when it operates as heat pump is a 5.78 b 1.147 c 2.24 or d 6.78 so you can pause and calculate it okay so the solution is d now the cop of a reversible as it is a carnot cycle is reversible so a cop of a reversible heat pump is t1 
that is t1 is the effect that we require and divided by the work input that is t1 minus t2 so it is equal to 305 divided by 305 minus 260 that is 305 divided by 45 which is equal to 6.78 okay so we will go to the next question the basis of temperature measurement is a zeroth law of thermodynamics b first law of thermodynamics c second law of thermodynamics or d third law of thermodynamics so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is the basis of temperature measurement is the zeroth law of thermodynamics which says if A is in thermal equilibrium with B and B is in thermal equilibrium with C, then A is in thermal equilibrium with C. Okay. So when we have a standard and with that you may you calibrate your thermometer. So A that is the thermometer uh, that is uh, the standard is in thermal equilibrium with B, the thermometer. And now, the thing that you are measuring, that is C, is in thermal equilibrium with your thermometer. So, the thing that you are measuring is in thermal equilibrium with your, with A, that is your, uh, the, the one which, which you are calibrating. So, that is the basis of temperature measurement which is comes from the zero law of thermodynamics. So, we will go to the next question. The standard triple point of water is A, 0 degree centigrade, B, plus 0 0.01 degree centigrade, C, minus 0 0.01 degree centigrade, or D, 4.4 degree centigrade. So, we can pause and think of the answer. So, the answer is, the standard triple point of water is plus 0 0.01 degree centigrade, which is equal to 273.16 Kelvin. Now, triple point of water means the temperature at which all three phases of water exist. That is, it, water exists in the form of water vapor, in the form of liquid water, and also in the form of ice. So, it happens at the temperature 273.16 Kelvin or plus 0 0.01 degree centigrade. So, we will go to the next question. In a gas of volume 6000 centimeter cube and at a pressure of 100 kilopascal, if this is compressed quasi statically according to PV square equal to constant until the volume becomes 2000 centimeter cube. Then the final pressure and work temperature, work transfer are a 900 kilopascal and 2 kilojoule, 1000 kilopascal and 1.2 kilojoule, c 900 kilopascal and 1.2 kilojoule, or d 1000 kilopascal and 2 kilojoule. So you can pause and calculate the answer. So the answer is C. Now, see P1, P1, so PV square equal to constant. So P2 we can determine as P1, V1 square divided by V2 square, so which is equal to 900 kilopascal. Now, the work done during a polytropic process is given by W equal to P1 into V1 divided by N minus 1 into 1 minus p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n. So, if you compute, we will get w equal to minus 1200 joule or w equal to minus 1.2 kilo joule. Now, the negative sign indicates that the work is done on the system and so work transfer is 1.2 kilo joule. Now, here this is only the polytropic process, work done only the polytropic process. Okay. Now, if you are having a compressor and if you want to have the total work done then again one more parameter will add up so instead of w equal to 
वन बाय एन माइनस वन इनटू पी वन भी वन इनटू वन माइनस पी टू बाय पी वन टू बाय एन माइनस वन बाय एन देयर विल बी अनदर फैक्टर ऑफ एन मल्टीप्लाई टू दिस वन ओके प्लीज डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज विद दैट सो ओनली फॉर दी पॉलिट्रॉपिक प्रोसेस व्हेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग देन इट इज वन बाय एन माइनस वन दैट इक्वेशन कम्स सो यू कैन चेक द इक्वेशन ऑफ दिस फ्रॉम द सोर्स ओके सो विल गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वर्क इज ए पार्ट फंक्शन बी पॉइंट फंक्शन सी बोथ पार्ट फंक्शन एंड पॉइंट फंक्शन और डी cannot be defined as a function so you can pause and think of the answer so the answer is work is a path function because the amount of work that we do depends on the path travel from one thermodynamic state to another okay so if we take another path the work done would be different that is why work is a path function like from a to b if you go if you take a polytropic process or if you take a isothermal process both will have different work done okay so with this we conclude the part 2 of this apsc integration 2021 mechanical engineering paper so stay tuned we will soon come back with the third part hope you have all of you have enjoyed thank you